Welcome back to Inside Adelaide. Well, the Adelaide Film Festival is here again, ready to showcase some of the best local and independent films, not only from Australia, but from around the world. It kicked off last week at the opening gala and Inside Adelaide was there. The Big Pond Adelaide Film Festival opened last Thursday. People came from around Adelaide, including some of Adelaide's up and coming filmmakers. Mike Rand happily opened the festival. This festival will present 150 films from 49 countries, including 20 world premieres and 55 Australian premieres. Mr Rand then awarded Judy Davis with the Don Dunstan Award for a Lifetime Achievement in Cinema. It has to be remembered, I think, about acting that um, you're also just trying to make a buck. <laughs> you're just trying to pay the rent. And it goes on and on relentlessly year after year. And you get older and older. The crowd was treated to the documentary Mrs. Carey's Concert. Did you, I, that's what I don't get. I don't know the others as people. But I just know what she's like when she has that instrument in her hand. A talk. She's not a bad person. No one can do what she can do as a bad person. Well, it was fantastic. It was a, it was a great expose into something that I hadn't personally experienced for 40 years. It was great. I thought it was great. It was an interesting choice. It's probably not something that I picked out of the guard, but um, I thought it was a really amazing film, and a lot of people were clapping during the film, which was really nice. After seeing the documentary, crowds were keen to see more. We're going to another movie tomorrow night. We're going to see Snowtown, which I expect will be very different than what this has been. Uh, I'd really like to see some of the animation. There's a film called The Illusionist, which is by the same director as did the trip to Belleville a couple of years ago. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that one. I work in the film industry. I really love watching films and um, it's always inspiring to see some amazing work that comes from all over the world. There's a French kind of quirky comedy called Elsewhere that I think uh, might be a, a bit of a buried gem. It's, it's um, something that's quite close to my heart. There's um, a couple of stunning South American ones, October and Colours of the Mountain. And um, you know, a lot of people really, you know, there's something about South American cinema that I think a lot of people like and this won't disappoint them. Um, and in the documentaries, like Waiting for Superman, one about American education system, it sounds dry, it's riveting, it's up there uh, in, in some ways as um, interesting and powerful as uh, Mr Kerry's concert and a nice companion piece to it. The Adelaide Film Festival is a positive event for South Australia, allowing local directors to showcase their talents, which has been made possible through the Adelaide Film Festival Investment Fund. We have a million dollars every two years to support work, so this time we've got 14 projects that we've supported, uh, seven feature films, uh, five short films and then two cross-platform works and um, or three cross-platform works I should say and uh, so basically we invest money uh, to to get films to production we're normally a minority investor or there's normally much bigger investors than us like Screen Australia and Sasserine Film Corporation or Film Victoria and so on but we've got kind of vital money that often comes in first as people are trying to get financed and the key thing that we ask is that they premiere in our festival and that's worked really well for us. The festival runs from the 24th of February to the 6th of March, filling cinemas across the city. Sione Kelly reporting. An exhibition in Adelaide is displaying the works of a new generation of Aboriginal artists. They're refusing to be constrained by perceptions. Liam Mannix has the story. The artists at Stop the Gap don't want viewers to focus on their heritage. They just want to be appreciated as artists. But throughout the exhibition, the influences from their heritage are inescapable. We want people most of all to look at the work. You know, it shouldn't be just getting focused on the fact that this is, um, oh my gosh, this is contemporary international Indigenous art. That's obviously the foundation for it, but it's amazing work. The exhibition, a part of March's Adelaide Film Festival, opened on North Terrace last Friday and showcases Indigenous contemporary art from Australia, Canada, New Zealand and America. The works explore dark themes, colonialism, repression, death, but those are the shared experiences of the global indigenous. There's obvious um, uh, shared experiences of colonial history, uh, for example between Canada 
and Australia there's the shared experience of children being removed and placed in in Canada they were placed in residential schools here they were placed in government homes and um, missions church missions um, and the denial of uh, access to cultural practices and language and and those kinds of things which have impacted it up to the present day and I think we've also all had to deal with stereotypes in our relevant countries about how we're supposed to look and sound and act as Indigenous people in each of those countries. And the same can be said um, of our, our visual arts or our writing or any of those things. We're meant to fit into these nice little neat boxes. Each of the six works featured is a looped audio-visual composition, off-colour images dancing to a haunting, murmuring beat. So there's a real mix of, uh, of things that are going on there, from the very intimate, um, small scale, smaller scale images to very lyrical kind of um, uh, evocative works that are, are, are almost as if you're travelling through time, very visceral works. Warwick Thornton's amazing 3D uh, movie, which he has created as a bit of a spectacle that you you're meant to feel like you are in a cinema almost, which is why he's got the popcorn and the popcorn cups and the dark kind of, you know, theatrical um, space. But um, he had a very small but succinct artist statement, which I thought was fantastic. When I was little, I wanted to be Jesus when I grew up. And I'm sorry, I'm paraphrasing it the wrong way. But that's his statement. There's no kind of massive explanation of this work is about blah, blah, blah. In Rebecca Belmore's work, it's the gritty, dirty, inner city ghetto of Vancouver on the east side where First Nations women, Aboriginal women from that community were kidnapped and disappeared off the streets and found murdered um, over a, a ten year period and no one seemed to care. That's the spirit of that place. It's a really sad, um, empty place and she has invested that with respect for those people who were killed. Um, we've been here in um, various places for 60,000 years at least um, and we also live in the here and now. Um, but I go back to my community which is impacted upon by the um, NT intervention and I see what my family, my cousins, my nieces and nephews are having to go through up there and so it's how do I kind of close help close that kind of gap of haves and have-nots and also not to be as trite to think that an exhibition is going to change that it's not but hopefully it will make people ask more questions. Liam Mannix, Inside Adelaide. Don't go anywhere, the Fringe is coming up next. <laughs>